welcome back to my channel. My name is Susie from Glow Gone Green and I'm so excited for today's video because it's totally different than anything I've ever done. I actually asked you guys to send me your questions on Instagram and then I would answer them in this video. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you want to see more of these videos, let me know in the comments. I could definitely do more of them. I really want to give you guys the information that you want and need um, to live your best natural life. So let's dive in. Okay, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, be sure to hit that red subscribe button below and then hit the bell notification right next door so you'll be the first to know when I have new videos that come out. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, be sure to follow me at Girl Gone Green on Instagram and join my Facebook group, Girl Gone Green Babes. It's so fun, there's over 2,000 of us in there sharing all about natural living. Okay, so let's dive into the first question. What are, What is one product or thing that you attribute the most to your good skin? I've had a, a lot of people ask this kind of in different ways, like what's your favorite product, da 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 da. Honestly, I would say the biggest thing that has attributed to good skin and just seeing results over time is actually not a product, but being consistent with my skincare routine. So I think what happens is like anything, people will get on this bandwagon for like six weeks or a month and they're like, I'm just gonna go crazy and do really good at skincare. And then they fall off the bandwagon, you know, maybe the season changes or whatever, something happens and then they stop. And then they get on it again, like in a couple months or maybe a year goes by and then they're like, oh my goodness, I'm turning 30. I really need to get back on it. Um, I think it's just like that. It's similar to, you know, like an eating plan, like people go really crazy for, you know, a month and then they're just like, oh, they're done. Or they do like a whole 30, right? And then they're over it. It's similar to that where you really just have to be consistent. It's just a lifestyle thing, right? You wash your face every day. You hydrate it every day. You add like some sort of active serum or ingredient every day that's going to really help turn back the clock, do the work for you, whatever you are wanting as far as your skincare results. That is what it, what has been the biggest thing for me. I think people underestimate like the basics when it comes to skincare and that's just cleansing your skin every day and every night. I mean, there's so many people I know that just don't even wash their face at night um, and that can really um, age your skin and do a lot of things, um, disrupt your skin and not you're not hydrating it properly. Um, there's just a lot of things that if you don't do the basics, like you can't expect, you know, one product to literally change your skin overnight. Um, I mean, there's definitely amazing products out there, but I think the biggest thing for me is just being consistent with my routine every day, every morning. I like take care of my skin. It's kind of a self care thing for me. I know different people have different things that they use for self care, but for me, that really is one thing that um, has helped and I feel like has given me the long-term results that I love because I'm consistent and over time it's like my skin is working for me and not against me so practice that just do the basics be consistent washing your face be consistent hydrating be consistent adding those products what is your favorite clothing brand this is a question I got a lot <clears throat> okay I don't really have a favorite clothing brand per se I have brands that I like some of them are made well. I really like a lot of things from Aerie right now because they are just comfy and cozy. And that's kind of where I'm at with three small kids. I, I work at home. I'm at home a lot. I want to look put together, but I also want to feel comfortable. And I feel like Aerie does a really good job of that. Um, and I like how I can transition to like working out in them too a lot of times. I really like anything from Nordstrom, huge Nordstrom fan. Yeah, I haven't delved super deep though into like organic clothing brands, to be honest. That just hasn't been my niche or niche. Um, I'm definitely interested, but I just haven't really looked too much into it yet. Um, I know like here and there some brands and that I have, but I haven't like um, delved super deep, so. Hope that's helpful. Okay, what's the best least toxic way to remove bikini line hair without getting irritation? This is a really good question. So as an esthetician, um, I used to wax a lot, but I am not pro waxing, especially because it really creates larger pores, especially if you are doing it on your face. Over time, your pores are just gonna get larger because it's like really pulling your skin a lot. Um, when you wax, you're going in the opposite direction of your skin, so it's really, um, pulling that hair out kind of in an irritating way and it's going to cause a lot more friction and redness 
Whereas what I would recommend instead is actually to do sugaring. So sugaring is really different. It actually is just like an, a really natural form. It has like sugar, um, usually like lemon, um, some water, and like they put it in a paste, sometimes glycerin. And then um, they'll just mix it up and then they put, put it on your skin and they actually remove it in the same direction as your hair. So it's not as irritating and you don't have as much redness because you're not going in the opposite direction like you are when you wax your skin. Um, and it's also really natural. It doesn't have like any toxic ingredients. Um, it's just like the best organic way I feel like to really remove that hair if you're wanting to do it pretty consistently. Why videos? I love your content but never have time to watch videos. So I started doing videos just because I had pulled you guys before and I had a like an overwhelming response. It was like 80 some percent of people wanted me to do videos and I think I felt too, as a beauty blogger, it would kind of be doing a disservice to a lot of you if I didn't do videos just because typically as a beauty blogger, you want to see the product, you want to see how it looks, and um, it's just easier to do that in a video than in writing content. And I felt like I was like missing out on a portion of my audience by not like ser serving them in that way. So I started doing videos. And another cool thing about videos, if you feel like you don't have time to watch them, because I totally get that, is a lot of times what I do is I'll just turn on a YouTube video, but I'm not watching it. I'm just listening to it. And it's almost like a podcast. So if I'm cooking dinner or if I'm cleaning up or whatever, um, it's just another way or I even listen to them in, in the car um, to like kind of get the the general idea of what they're saying, but I'm not necessarily watching the actual video. So I would recommend trying that if you find you don't have time to necessarily sit down and just watch something, maybe just turn the video on and just be listening to it. A lot of people actually transcribe their videos into podcasts um, and then they actually transcribe them even more into writing. So it's, they're getting all the like forms of communication, but that's kind of why I started doing videos just because it, I felt like everyone wanted them and um, I really just wanna serve you guys in every way. Obviously I still write blogs, um, I always will write, I love writing, but I think this is another great way to like get to know you guys better, have you see me, um, and just you know serve you in a different manner. What cassava flour recipe do you use? I've gotten this question a lot because I um, make cassava tortillas and I'll show them on my Instagram stories. So I originally used the back of the, I think it's Ata, Atos, yeah, Atos cassava flour. That's like a lot of the cassava flour people love. It's a certain brand of cassava flour. I'll leave it in the notes, but um, I would just follow the recipe on the back of that. It's really easy. It's just cassava flour, some sort of oil, and then water. But now I don't even measure. I really just eyeball it. It's pretty easy. Like if the dough is too sticky, you add a little more flour. If it's you know too dry, I add a little more oil or water. And they honestly always turn out. I also add a little sea salt too. It really makes them taste even better. But um, you can even just look up or Google like cassava flour tortilla and you will get basically the same thing. Um, that's what I use. I hope that helps. It's so easy though. Once you start making them, you'll, you won't even look. Then I just use two pieces of parchment paper. I put them, put the dough down on one of them and then I just roll it out and they're so good. They're so easy to make. Do you prefer a sunscreen foundation in one or prefer to have them separate? It really just depends on what I'm doing. I don't have a preference. It just depends if both the products are really good. I just want the products to perform and really work. So I really love Elia's Super Serum um, with SPF 40. It just came out not too long ago. I love it because it has a high SPF and it's thicker and it really gives me that coverage that I crave, but um, it has SPF. So if I was going to the beach or if I was like going to be out in sun, I would definitely wear that, but I don't necessarily have to have sunscreen in my foundation every day. I don't mind applying it separate if it's a great product and it really sinks in. There's a lot of good sunscreen products that almost act like a primer before you put your makeup on. So I think it just depends on what you like um, and what kind of coverage you like. If you want just like light coverage and you prefer to have your sunscreen, a tinted moisturizer might be more your thing and you might love that. For me, I like a little more coverage. So I find it hard to find a product that really has the sunscreen and the coverage I want um, until I I use the Elia Super Serum. That one is awesome. 
But I did just do a video on my favorite facial sunscreen. So if you haven't checked that out, be sure to check it out because I go through all of them, my favorites, and like when I would use them, if they're good for the beach and the pool, where the sun is stronger or not and all that. So check that out. I'll leave a link below for it. Do I wear an SPF every day? I do not. Um, I really don't in the winter at all. I usually just wear it in the summer when I'm going outside um, or if I'm just going to be out in the sun more. I do this really because I feel like, you know, we are inside a lot, especially in the Northwest. Um, we're not getting a lot of sun. Not that you can't get, um, obviously, sun from or like sun damage when there's no sun. You know, the rays are still coming through, but it's obviously not as strong. But usually if I am, you know, outside and it's, you know, a chilly day, maybe in the fall or the winter, I am just wanting to like get as much sun as I can. I don't want my body to soak up that vitamin D and really get some something. So I'm not going to really necessarily block it because I am probably not going to get that much anyways, right? Um, because I it's colder and it's not as strong. So I don't wear it every day. I wear it more in the summer or if I'm going to be outside and I know that the sun is going to be really strong. Um, I typically always wear a hat too in the summer or the spring if I'm going to be outside just to protect my skin overall from the sun. Best way to keep your eyelashes curled after putting mascara on. I've gotten this question a lot. So really the best thing that I would recommend is you can curl your lashes before. This is a little trick. Obviously a lot of people do that, but you can also curl them after. Once your product is on and you kind of curl them right away, it helps to set them a little bit more because the product is, you know, still damp and like workable and you're able to kind of get the eyelash curler in there and really help set it. Another thing that people will do is um, take their blow dryer and their eyelash curler and blow dry their lashes, just like give it a quick shot while um, they're curling their lashes to really help set their eyelashes. I had a friend that used to do that because her lashes were really straight and that was like the only thing that would work for her. So other than that, I... Yeah, those are my tips. Like use a blow dryer or something. I know before I thought they had like a product out there that was actually a like heated eyelash curler that you could use. Um, so if you have really stick straight lashes, you might want to try that. Also check out Elia's new Limitless Mascara because they have like a patented curl end and then a lengthening end brush. That's really, really great for helping to curl your lashes. I am a woman with short, mostly um, straight, thick hair. What pomade or paste do you recommend? Okay, so I would definitely recommend Innersense Whipped Cream Texturizer. That is one of my favorite hair products, hands down, in clean beauty. It really is great for the whole family. My husband uses it, my daughters use it, and I use it. But it's really going to add some texture and some definition. It's going to add some shine, smoothness, and a little bit of hold. And it's still going to be workable, though. It's not going to be super thick or gunky, which I really like. Another one that's great is Josh Rosebrook has a styling cream that kind of does something similar. It's a little bit thicker and going to add a, add a little bit more hold than, say, the Inner Sense one. So if you want something like that, I would definitely um, check it out. Can I get a hair tutorial? That's a question. I just did one actually, so I'm going to leave a link below for the hair tutorial. I did it in my last video last week where I show you my favorite natural beauty hair products and then I actually curl my hair so you can kind of get an idea of how I use them and when I use them. How do I feel about essential oils? I think they're great and I think they have such a place. I'm not one of those people that is like a diehard essential oil person and like have, have to use them every day and I use them in like all these different you know, protocols. I'm not like that. I haven't really researched them like a whole lot where I feel like really confident either in um, telling people what to do or how to use them. I just, you know, I have a diffuser that I like to use. Um, I think one of the reasons too why I haven't like dived or like dove super deep into essential oils is because the last like six years I've been having babies and I just get a little bit more nervous and I guess cautious about just having essential oils running all the time with like small children and babies um and I know like different ones you can't use and all that so I don't I just tend to not like use them as much as I probably would if I didn't have kids I feel like because um I just don't want to look into like which ones aren't safe and all of that so 
Um, I just like kind of stick to have having a diffuser in my office. I use it from time to time or if like I'm not feeling well, I might like diffuse um, like a certain blend. But other than that, I don't do a ton with just like essential oils. Okay, what gradual tanning lotion or serum do you like? Not a self tanner, but the gradual tan. Okay, so I'm assuming you're talking about something that is like I don't know, I'm thinking back in the day when I would like maybe get a Jergens like gradual lotion that would just like give me a tint or something. I don't know, maybe that's it. But I don't really know of anything in clean beauty that isn't a self tanner per se um, that will, like everything I know of is, is a self tanner, I guess, but they are gradually going to give you color. Um, so I'm going to just share with share those. So I would recommend Eco Tan, their mousse. I actually just reviewed it in my best of clean beauty for April. It's such a great product, but it will give you that gradual tan. It's not going to give you like that, um, you know, really self tanner look right away. It's just going to give you like a little bit of color. Um, you can hardly tell it's there really with the first application. You really have to add like two or three applications to really notice a huge difference. So Check out the Eco Tan Mousse. Um, it's gonna really give you that gradual tan I think that you're wanting. Can you talk about the kitchen cookware and utensils that you use? Yes, I can. This video is getting really long, so I might have to cut some of the questions. I really like um, using green pan. I like using, um, which are like ceramic pans. Um, I like using the Cruset. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I like using um, Extrema. I like using, um, cast iron. I use a variety of pans. I like go through phases. I feel like where I use some more than the other. Um, I'm actually going to be updating my non-toxic cookware post soon. So I'll give you all the details on that and what my favorites are. Cause I've, I've been actually using a couple recently that are newer and that I haven't included in the post. So stay tuned for that. As far as utensils, I use a lot of silicone utensils as far as like cooking. Um, I'll use like bamboo. Um, yeah, it's kind of, and then like obviously stainless steel for like eating and all of that. Can you explain the importance of collagen and how to use it? Yes, so collagen is our body's most abundant protein. It really holds our bones, our cartilage, um, all of it together. It helps like our skin from saying. It's just really prevalent. And so as we age, we lose collagen and that's why our skin starts to sag. Maybe we'll have some like more aches and pains. Our joints, joints might hurt. So taking collagen is awesome because a lot of studies have shown like when we take collagen, it can really help with our joints um, to not have them, you know, feel as painful or have that soreness. Um, and then also with skin, it's shown that it helps to really get that elastin back and not have it sag quite as much and help with fighting, um, you know, just wrinkles and um, giving that like that plumpness, plumpness back. So I recommend definitely taking collagen. I take it every single day. There's so many great brands out there. I'll link some below. Um, you don't want to mix it with coffee though, because it can really break down. You want to make sure you mix it with like cooler um, liquids. So what I like to do is I'll add it to my smoothie. Um, I'll add it to just like some water, maybe like I'll add some to my um, electrolytes when I'm drinking that. I'll add some to my chia puddings. Um, there's just so many ways, really. It, it just dissolves. When it gets the collagen hydrolysate, you just dissolves into whatever liquid, so you don't even know it's there. It's That's awesome, there's like no flavor. So I also put it in my um, like kids, random foods like you could put it in sweet potato like there's so many areas you could put it in so um definitely just add it to things and um it's so good for you what do you use as a makeup remover so i typically just use my cleanser that's like my favorite way and it's just one less step i have to do so that's why i love it so i love Beauty Counters Cleansing Oil from Counter Time because it removes all my makeup, all my eye makeup, everything. Um, there's no stinging and I don't need to like take a washcloth and like, you know, get it wet and like try to wipe off my eye makeup. It just literally will come off from rubbing it, rubbing my eyes and then rinsing with water, which is like the best because it's one less step. Um, I also love their new, um, they have a new cream cleanser, cocoa cream cleanser that's really good too from Beauty Counter. 
Um, and then Beauty Counter also has an eye makeup remover that is amazing. It is similar to the Mary Kay one that I used to use a ton of back in the day and it was like my go-to. Um, it's really similar to that. So um, if you want like a true eye makeup remover, definitely check out Beauty Counter because it's so good. Um, but also I just love using a cleanser. Not all cleansers though are going to remove your eye makeup. So you have to make sure that it does. I really like the Beauty Counter Counter Time. Like I mentioned, I'll leave links below. And then there's a couple new ones from them that I've been trying that I love as well um, that remove my eye makeup too. So um, yeah, that is all the questions that I'm gonna answer today. This video is already 25 minutes, which is really long. Hopefully I'll cut it down a little bit. But um, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to let me know that you wanna see more of these and we can like ask more or I can ask you guys again to share your questions and I will answer them on here. Um, I hope you're having the best week and I will see you next week.